Yo, yo, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This gentleman, right? Look, see, I even, I even got you. You got to spell it right. I, yeah. Most people get it wrong. Yeah, see, we got at Dionysus Bacchus, Christopher Bennett, Eminem. To anyone who doesn't know, sitting next to us today, because we have a missing man, man. A missing man, man. He did. He got married. He got married. I was just coming back from that wedding. Best man that I can be. And uh, he's off on his honeymoon, so we figured we can't we can't miss an MMM if we can handle it, right? Right, right. So we had to make sure that we had. Uh, I'm going with Switzerland. Switzerland. Um, yeah, you are. You're like the Switzerland of picks. No one can get upset. No one can have hurt feelings. I want to say. Tron. Tron, okay. Tron, Tron can have her feelings. Tron, I'm yeah. gonna, I want to keep tonight. it to a, a minimum for the uh, integrity of the stream. Gee, so. I sure hope that there's no Tron tonight. Because... I don't know. It's a mystery even yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah, but dude. All right. So for anyone at home who doesn't know you, just give us a breakdown of what's what's your magic background. All right. So first, congratulations to Anne, his fiance in this super awesome way you used to my picture. Yeah. That uh, Brett Receiver being best man. Right. Super sick. Best card in modern. It, so. Well, I, whoa, magic. But that's okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, best, okay. best card in magic. Okay, okay. <laughs> so uh, I've been playing since probably about Odyssey competitively. Okay. Before that, even like uh, Tempest era, something like that. Okay. So uh, I really started getting into it when I was drafting with my friends during Triple Mirrodin, uh, which is not a good draft to be your first draft ever. It's actually probably pretty terrible to have your first draft be of a set like Mirrodin. Uh, but after that, I started getting a little bit more competitive. Uh, I ended up qualifying for Pro Tour Philadelphia for the first modern. Um, a loophole with that, I'll have to tell anybody that wants to know. It's a, a lengthy story that's not really worth telling. But, uh, you know, we went and did that, and it was a, a good time. It was fun. But uh, after that, I pretty much decided to become a judge. I'm a level one judge currently. I work on the store coordination team to make sure everybody has staffing for their events uh, in the Fairfax and Baltimore area. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much what I do now. I work at the shop to... Uh, Help with the stream on Tuesday nights, and then any um, competitive REL events they have, I do that as well. Cool. Yeah, and absolutely. He hit the nail right on the head. If we didn't have him to sit at the tables and keep our players honest, then we would we would have a much, I would say, cheatier stream. I'm using cheatier as a word. but Mistake uh, ridden. Yes, ridden. Mistake filled. Mistake yes. ridden. Mistake People filled. beating eight-year-old boys cheating oh. when they should be dead. And- See, he's not here to defend himself. That's right. That's so why I, like I did it. That's I like I that. It. I like that. I hope he sees it later. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this is uh, kind of interesting for us because we did the Invitational and we've had some trouble with video over the past couple weeks. And, you know, our Invitational, we had to do full full voice coverage. We didn't have any video at all. Um, I think it actually went pretty well, uh, all things considered. And then we found out later on that our first week as well had the same problems. But of course, uh, Eminem using a laptop at the table to take sideboard notes, make sure everything's together. He said, "Well, I'll just install XSplit and we'll just we'll do it that way." Is Nan on a new diet? What's up, Charles? Biscuit? I I ate Nan biscuits. I ate Nan biscuit. Oh man, um, but he yeah helped us out, loaned us the laptop, so we've got two out of five. I'm sorry, four out of five rounds tonight for you guys. We we unfortunately didn't catch it on the first round. We looked at it and we're like, oh, that's not going to work. Uh, and I am working towards, I think it may be the software. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to test it tomorrow sure. for the next week. So hopefully, but if not, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. awesome. And, and between us and you all, the first round was probably the one to miss anyway. It was not, uh, not very awesome to watch, so... Um, that was uh, it was, it was John versus yeah, Jamie. Jamie, correct? yeah, it was Tron and uh, um, I guess you'd call it the new uh, uh, not Summer Bloom, but the new uh, uh, Amulet. Of Amulet, Titan, Titan, Amulet Titan. Okay, yeah, so right. he uh, he not a great matchup for John, but uh, you know, so it was probably the best one to drop if we we're going to drop hmm. any of them. Hmm. Are you telling me there was a turn three card? There might have been. There might have been a turn. To Jamie did have to map for one of the, the lanes, though. It wasn't a natural Tron, so uh, he did okay, have to work right. a little bit for yep. it. Well, we got to make Tron players work. That's right. To anyone that plays Tron, that's awesome. I had to play Tron this weekend, so, you know, we, we kind of took a day. Uh, all right, I guess the night before the wedding, Nan wanted to play Magic. 
and one of his groomsmen has the uh, Eldrazi Tron deck assembled. Uh, so, you know, ramp into a log, and, but you play Tron lands. That's fair. You only get four lands to do that, yeah. right? Four yeah, lands. that's it. Um, and I was playing Burn, which, hey, you know what? I'm not going to knock anyone that plays sure. Burn. Uh, but yeah, I played some Tron. I was not happy about that. So I didn't make the banner, by the way. I, I, oh, I figured yeah, yeah, we yeah. could keep it yeah, to... I'm all right with that. Yeah, we'll, we won't put it out there that we're against Tron, but there's two people here that, you know, if you play Tron, you just keep doing what you're doing. Just come, don't come find me. That's right. Um, anyway, I know what you guys want to see. You want to see some action. You want to hop in. So we're just going to go right into round two, and I am going to show you guys these point totals because this is really why you're here. And boom, look at that. I changed the color for this season, right? What do you think? What do you think? That's good. Yeah, yeah. So we've got, after that first round, half, uh, not half, uh, but we've got Tim, TJ, Josh Robinson, who is a new face. I, I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, uh, but hopefully he'll keep returning. And as well as, oh, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan Carter is Ryan also is a new face. Playing a fun deck. Is he playing a fun uh, deck? Yeah, he, he didn't make it on stream, but he's playing a... Harless Hitsugu burn deck, so he counts to ten like Infect does instead oh, of twenty. Oh, yeah. okay, all right, okay, all right. And then we have Jorge, which Jorge comes in and out every once yeah, in yeah. a while. Um, and, you know, real life gets in the way, but uh, I'm happy to see Jorge coming out as well. And and Max has always been kind of showing up, and Michael Maurer. Okay, yeah, I don't recognize the name. Yeah, but... do you know Josh? Uh, no, I don't know Josh Okay, either. okay. So, yeah. you know, just a couple new faces to uh, start our Season 3 off. And we will have point totals updated at the end of the night for over the two weeks. So just so you guys are aware that that is done, even though we did miss coverage. But let's hop into the second round, and let's, let's take a look and see what's going on. Okay, alright. So we've got Ben Farabee playing Burn, and we have Max Dockenbach. Playing, I'm going to say band control, and I know you, you were sitting at the table, and and I wasn't sure what it was. I just knew it was band. Uh, he, he had a lot of planeswalkers in there. He had a lot of uh, control elements, for sure. Um, I mean, it's it, you could call it like band walkers, but it's probably more of like a tap-out control or like a... Um, a uh, yeah, I wasn't sure what... You know, like a, that, that style control rather than permission. There's not a lot of... Permission based decks in in modern right now, but he I think he's running some number of a couple counter spells and then um, a lot of a lot of planeswalkers from what I saw. Okay, all right, and uh, oh you know what uh, one thing that I forget to do every time straw poll is going up, guys. Let us know is it going to be burn? Is it going to be this this bant tap out bant control deck? I'm just going to put bant there and we'll see how we go. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain because I already know the right. results. I don't want to I don't want to slam anyone one way or the other. You got it. You got it. What about you? Uh, you know, at this point, I know Ben. I know his burn deck. I've seen it in action before. Um, and looking at, uh, I've got some secret information on the sideboards, which we're gonna talk about here <laughs> later. Um, I, I'm gonna run with burn. I just think you know, after playing this weekend, I can safely say that red decks do win more often than not, unless you're playing Tron that plays Chalice of the Void, yeah. which is real sad. And and I think you're right. I think that even initially, the the idea of the matchup of a Planeswalker control versus burn is probably an uphill battle for the the Planeswalker deck anyway, seeing as how. Um, you know, like I said, they, they tap out. They don't really have a lot of interaction with the burn spells themselves, and as long as the burn player can keep any uh, real threat off the table that might have lifelink or, you know, anything that threatens something like that. I think, you know, Burn probably is just heavily favored in this matchup in the first place. Okay, all right. And I am going to apologize to you guys because it's something I noticed when I was getting everything set up is the light just in this top right-hand corner is vicious. It's it's going gonna, it's gonna to glare hard. So we're going to do our best to make sure that we're catching the cards as best as possible if we can. The lands, I think, is where we're really going to stumble. Um, but yeah, get those votes in, guys. And also, well, we'll talk about that later. We do have this fancy card bot, exclamation point card, and the name of the card will get you any of the cards, Oracle text, the full deal, whenever you guys are interested in that. Just type that in chat. It's nice to see somebody trying some control aspects, too, and 
uh, modern because, like I said, you know they had the the pro tour this weekend. I don't know mm-hmm. if you, you probably didn't get to catch any since you were doing the festivities. Yeah, I you know I was on Twitter, I was scrolling a little bit, but that was basically it. I yeah. didn't get to really see anything. The finals were uh, Control Mirror, um, and I believe it was like um, American Control, and I don't remember what the other was on, but uh, it was nice to see some Control elements back in a a newer set because Control has really been kind of pushed to the back in terms of Wizards lately, I think, and Legacy and Vintage, it's a very, very, uh, very heavy archetype that you can plan on seeing, but here in Modern and Standard, recently it's not been too strong, so hopefully some of that carries over into Modern and you get uh, a couple real control decks back instead of some of the watered-down, unfortunate cards we've been forced to play with. <laughs> yeah, and I, and so we'll, we'll talk about this more. Like I said, I, I have a little bit of information I'm super excited to talk about some sideboard choices for this match specifically. Um, but there there are a lot of neat cards that are coming out of Kaladesh that hopefully not only our players, but you guys at home are taking advantage of. So we're, we're drawing seven cards. We're going to take a look at it. And actually, you know what? Now that I, we're talking about this band deck, I, I wonder if he's running, Max is running that Tamiyo, that new Tamiyo Planeswalker. Field Researcher, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I don't I don't recall one way or the other. And again, I'll, I'll try to keep my uh, sure. my insider intel to a minimum. I honestly don't remember seeing it in the match. That's not to say that uh, it's not there in the, the 75 somewhere. Um, I'm just not sure what kind of uh, um, number he's running, if any. And we're already at Ben dropping a mountain into a goblin guide. Uh, Max drew the one swept heath he off of that as well. If you guys didn't get to see because they glare a little bit. Dropping Max to 18. And we'll go to 17 after the fetch. The, uh, you know, the, the sideboard, I think, is where Max going to... Lean really, really heavily. Uh, I mean, I believe he, yeah, he's run that a noble here, but obviously that's not going to do much to stymie the the Goblin God or any other creature really that Max might have in his deck. So Bloodstained Mire is coming down for Ben. He's going to go to seventeen to even things out. And I, I you know what, I'm going to guess. I'm I'm calling uh, Sacred Foundry. Oh, oh, stopping ground. Come on now. I think he heard you. He must have heard me. <laughs> so we got stopping ground into... All right, so Searing Blaze coming down. So Landfall Trigger. And if you guys are unsure of these cards, like I said, Card Bot, Exclamation Point Card, Searing Blaze, boom. Landfall Trigger. He's going to get three damage to not only that Noble, but also to Max. Yeah, Max reveals the rest of there, so obviously I think he'd draw that off the guy, but he will draw off a turn. Uh, I think Steering Blaze is a really interesting choice in Modern, because some decks that it's good against, it's great against. I mean, it always kills Noble Hierarch. It always kills most of the infect creatures, barring any kind of pump or anything. Even without the landfall trigger, it'll kill them. But it's also two mana, so when it's on, it's a great card. It's going to deal three damage to a creature and a player. But um, without the landfall trigger, it's, it's really... It's a really bad draw in top deck mode for Burn, but it you know it, it paid off there, and it seems to be a great card for him uh, so far in the match. And just sneaking a peek at his hand, I see it looks like two lava spikes. Is uh, okay, so he did he did use that arid mesa there to fetch, which is going to take him to sixteen. And it also looked like uh, one of his favorite cards, Ben, is the the Eidolon of Great Revel. Um, so I did sneak a peek at one of those as well. It's actually a, an interesting reprint they did with, uh, it was Pyrostatic Pillar, and it was one in a red for the same effect, and then now they just put it on a 2-2 creature. So even for Legacy, they pretty much push Pyrostatic Pillar out of sideboards and some main decks, and Eidolon, you know, gives it legs and gets to put another clock on, hmm. on the opponent. Okay. And obviously okay. modern Pyrostatic Pillar is not legal, so it's an obvious choice. Right. So Goblin Guy getting in there, here's two more damage, uh... and it looked like a Planeswalker? Yeah, I couldn't tell. And he's going to Tarkus Command, presumably plus one, plus one to his team, and three to uh, Max. Yeah, it looks like that's what happened. And Lava Spike for three more. And a pass back. Here's the draw. So it looks like he's got two cards in hand, so I think Max needs to win this turn if he wants to uh, stay in this. But uh, Just passes back. Yep. 
Could have a spell queller. Could have, uh, you know, remand, manly, mm-hmm. cancel, spell queller. Okay, so spell queller coming down. Exiles the lava spike to protect himself. Protect that life total. You know, he can take two. And Atarpa's command to push three damage. And yes. We'll, yeah, we'll just go to uh, game two, he says. And uh, I believe the Atarpa's command is um, uh, each opponent. It is. Or, so it, it actually doesn't even target for uh, effects that might matter, like uh, cards that Max may or may not have out of his sideboard, um, like a ley line or, or something to that effect. So Bird's going to take that one, one to zero. We're going to move to sideboards. And like I said, guys, I'm super excited about this because Max has got some interesting sideboard choices. So as always, Nan and I, we talk about who we want to read. So which would you like to read? Um, uh, You seem excited about Max, so I'll let you take Max. Okay, all right, all right. So on Max's side, we have two Wrath of God, two Void Shatter, one Fracturing Gust, one Blind Obedience... <laughs> One Fumigate, one Laboratory Maniac, one Dragonlord Dramoka, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Kasali Pride Mage, and two Leyline of Sanctity. Um, so, just right off the bat, those two Leyline of Sanctity are just like throwing alarms up for me. Like, hey, let's just board those in right away. Um, I'm also a fan of Blind Obedience in this matchup because most of the creatures that Ben is running. Uh, besides maybe Wild Nakatl, if he has that in his main deck, uh, is gonna ha- it has haste. So, right. you know, Blind Obedience being able to be put down on turn two and just to say, all right, I'm going to slow you down a little bit. Uh, but the cards I'm excited about are Ceremonious Rejection and uh, Fumigate. And I, really, I'm just excited to see Kaladesh cards come through. You know, Fumigate is a, a, a sweeper. Um, and uh, five mana sweeper. I saw it a little bit this weekend. I don't remember... Precisely what it does. Oh no. Come on, dude. Illuminate Primordial. Steam Frigate. Maybe our card bot is not Might not be updated with Kaladesh yet. Yeah, alright, well. That's alright, as I'm looking some things up here. Why don't you uh, read us Ben's sideboard there? Sure. Uh, ben is running four Path to Exile. Uh, best card in Magic. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Three Destructive Revelry. Uh, two Grim Lava Mancer, two Deflecting Palm, uh, which is always super fun, uh, and I always hope to see someone die to that. Uh, two Skullcrack and two Ensnaring Bridge. Um, I think he's definitely probably going to bring the uh, Destructives in, putting uh, probably putting Max with the White on Leyline. I think as a burn player, you pretty much have to do that every match if you see White. You know, just uh, assume that they're going to bring a Leyline in. Um, you know, I don't necessarily see any reason for um, the other cards per se. I mean, he could maybe make an argument for Path, but he really only saw the Spell Queller in that match. Uh, Lava Mancer gives him a little bit of reach um, for the late game, but again, for um, most of, the, most of the, the stuff that he... He didn't really actually even see much. I guess he saw a, a Counterspell uh, creature, and, and that was really about it. So, uh, The Ensnaring Bridges, I, I would assume, definitely don't come in in this matchup, so... Okay. All right. So we we've got some we've got some options on either side. What I, I really I just want to talk to Max because I want to know why the laboratory maniac. Uh, I I'm actually pretty unsure of that obviously. Uh, um, for those of you that don't know, lab maniac is two and a blue for a we- a wizard. Uh, he's a two two, and if you would draw a card and there are no cards left in your library, you win the game instead. Uh, so there must be. He we we didn't get to talk much about his deck. I don't know that he's running some kind of mill combo. He may um, have some kind of plan against like an Ulamog style effect that mills your library. I mean, that exiles, but maybe he thinks that he can live long enough through the damage and then, uh, then you know, slam the the uh, the lab maniac and play a draw spell. Uh, or actually, it's even not. Um, I, I I really only see it as is that in modern, but it is possible that. There is something else that Max would... I'm sure he put in a sideboard for a reason. Max Max is not a uh, uh, go online and get a list kind of person. So I could see that maybe he put that in there for a specific reason as opposed to, you know, just copying someone's 75. Sure, and sure. And uh, just so you guys know that Ceremonious Rejection, one blue counter-target colorless spell. Okay. Just, just hands down. That's pretty simple... 
get rid of. I mean, what are you thinking of? Like Ulamog? Yeah, Karn, um, Warm Coil, Barn, um, Kozilex Return. Not that that's great against him. Just probably Tron, things yeah. like that. Uh, I don't know. There's too, too many other. Or Affinity, I guess. It, it hits pretty much any any card you really want to in Affinity, especially plating, um, you know, Steel Overseas, the, the big haymakers like that. Yeah. And uh, I think for Max playing control, a card like plating is probably the most difficult because once that resolves, he can really just suit it up to any creature to make it a real threat as opposed to, you know, his sweepers can probably take care of the creatures, whereas he probably doesn't have a lot to deal with an actual Kringle, Kringle plating itself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm interested. So, obviously, I assume Max is going to be on the play, so we're going to take a look at seven cards and uh, maybe we'll see a little bit of this deck. Unfortunately, being paired up against Burn uh, doesn't leave a lot of time for uh, slower decks to kind of build together. But Ben's going to six, so that that could spell positivity for Max. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, is Ben's, Ben's Burn deck, uh, while it's a little traditional, it, it does run a, quite a bit of creatures. And, you know, I've seen some of these style Burn decks... As opposed to the all-in uh, burn spells, they still can get around the um, the ley line with cards like Atarkas Command, especially especially with cards like Swiss Beer. You know they can still pump them and they can point the burn spell somewhere else as opposed to only having to point it at the uh, the player. And they can kind of try to play line, around ley line as best they can that way. So it gives them a little bit of a a boon as opposed to some of the all-in burn decks that just really kind of roll over to ley line and, and hope they get some kind of uh, enchantment removal. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I did find this weekend when I was playing um, the Naya Burn list, um, he the the guy that had it, I didn't have Nicodles in. He had taken them out, and he was he still had them off to the side. And I played the game without it, and I was like, "Hey, come here, come here, bring me those Nicodles real quick." <laughs> and then I mean, every time, every game after that, it was like, "Here's a wild Nicodle. Here I'm doing three damage on right. turn two. All right, we've proven that we need the wild Nicodle." Um, so if you guys are going back and forth about that, um, just keep that in mind, that creature. It's it's definitely a good one. Well, I think sideboarding is probably the hardest thing to do. And if you watch pro coverage, and not that you should always try to play like a pro, obviously there's a progression, but um, you'll see them go to their sideboards between all five games. You know, once you get to top eight, it's best mm -hmm. of five. Right. And they'll go to it all the time because there are some cards that are great on the play and some cards that are great on the draw. And, and likewise, there are some cards that just aren't good in some situations in some decks and you want to make sure you avoid those so it's I think sideboarding is probably one of the hardest things to do correctly man yo Strong Smash what's going on and this this card is so shiny I'm assuming it's a tab land yeah or a shop land that or it could be like a, the port port uh, town or something like that to where he might not have the requisite uh, basics for it to come into play untapped Ben with a Bloodstained Mire going to 17 into that Wild Nicodle. Nan's off on his honeymoon, dude. He didn't have time for magic. Uh, it is it is me, Jeremy. Good to uh, good to see you in chat, man. All right, so, yep, it looks like uh, Prairie Street. Prairie Street, not yep. Port Town. That was the, uh, Port Town is the new, the new one. <laughs> Max for the Plains and passes back. That Nicodle currently a 2 2. Oh, is that a Blue Moon that he drew? Uh, oh, no, Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, Max could lean pretty heavily on a card like uh, your favorite Path to Exile. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it could really help him out in a situation like this. But, uh, you know, I mean, he's definitely going to have to do something soon. You can't take too many uh, attacks from that uh, Wild Nicodle, and there's the path as we speak. If I ever get married and there's no internet, I want a divorce. <laughs> and it looks like that's exactly what he was waiting on. Path to Exile <clears throat> comes down, exiles the Wild Nicodle, allowing Ben to go ahead and grab the mountain. And it looks like... Rift Bolt suspended? Yep, suspended Rift Bolt. There's a lot of interactions in the burn deck I think people overlook sometimes, especially it gets the... The uh, little kid burn idea, but uh, you know, Rift Bolt with cards like Monastery Swift Spear, Play Wheel all together, mm -hmm. and things like that. I think sometimes people take, don't take into account the sequencing. While sometimes it is just tap your lanes and point the burn spell, it's not always the case.
Seems like Ben's uh, in the tank here a little bit about what to play. Although with three man, he can probably play anything in this deck, I would imagine. I, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most most burn players just lead on one or two, right? Yeah, and he's, he's probably got a few instants because he just passes the turn there. There's really no need. You know, if he's got a little bit of concern of a counter spell or, you know, like a spell queller or something like that, he's there's really no need for him to rush right now. But Max doesn't have any kind of clock on him. He's looks like he's going to do everything in a turn with a bolt and uh, maybe something else. A nice guy, Ben, um, making sure that Max's life total is changing. Um, and I believe, is that a, and that may be a, a spot on our bingo board, which I'm pulling up now for you guys. Yeah, actually Ben earlier, uh, reminded, uh, or Max actually reminded Ben to, uh, make sure he scryed, which Ben did keep to the top. So it looks like there is a little bit of, uh, Johnny Fairplay going on in the, uh, the table, um, Although, I don't know how far that Goblin Guy is going to be for Max, but uh, we will see. Cracks a one swap Heath to go down to 13 to find a Forest. And I'm not sure if Max is thinking on this Goblin God. I guess he's just going to attack with it then. So he's going to trigger on the stack. He's going to flash in a Resto. Presumably to block. But uh, Trigger has to resolve first here. At this point, just show me show me a land, because it looks like he's got... Oh, no, well, he looks like he may have a couple cards. Uh, oh, yep, that was... Uh, I, that looked like a multicolored card, I can tell you that. Yes. And he's just going to block. We'll see if maybe Ben has a Searing Blaze or something here. Sure yes, yeah, there sure it does. is. Right on time. <laughs> he made sure to, you know, pretty smartly hold on to that uh, Wooded Foothills. Having seen the rest of the first game, he might have put it on in there. I mean, it's... Um, you know, four mana usually means a couple things in control, and uh, that is a uh, alternate art Geist of Saint Draft is what that is. It's okay. from the uh, uh, the region, or I don't, I don't actually remember what that was from, but it's definitely a promo Geist of Saint Draft. Um, Geist of Saint Draft, super strong card. Yes. Um, it especially in a matchup where. You know, you're playing. Your opponent's playing a lot of targeted spells that you know if they want to get rid of your creature. Sorry, right? And you know, Geist is uh, hexproof, and you know is bringing six damage each turn. And he's also pretty low, low curve, which is really good for Max in this matchup because some of his bigger, splashier spells he probably runs like a Gideon or um, something like that, to where they're not going to interact much because they'll just die before it happens. You know, Hairball asking, does this illegal play count the Nakato that should be exiled? But is in the burn graveyard. It's only an illegal play if it gets caught by the table judge, which it didn't. Uh, and also, that's a fleece main line. Is that a fleece main line? Fleece main line. Oh my. Um, but also, uh, we'll see if it comes into play here. But I have a feeling it won't with burn. Uh, however, you are right, Chris. It should be exiled. Fleece main line. See, that's that's a card that I don't think saw in a. Oh, okay, so we got the four four angel, the two two. Cleric coming in for six damage, and the uh, like, like you're pointing out, the, the other thing that's nice about Geist is that uh, they usually tap out to attack with their guys every turn, so you really don't have to worry about them having a blocker back for Geist unless uh, you know that's going on. In which case, um, they're probably already winning anyway. Did we uh, miss something there, Strong Smash? Ben, looking, he fetched on Declaration of Attackers? Oh, on stream, that judge's comment both missed. Oh, my. Oh, okay, okay. Here's two. Okay, so Searing Blaze. The card is just doing so much work yeah. against Max this match. And to me, it, it probably shouldn't, but maybe I, I underestimated how control-based his deck actually is. Getting rid of that fleece main lion, but will take six, six damage going to eight. Oh, the Baltimore Legacy event. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, then we had four or five players I think go out to that. It was uh, Jeremy, Julia, TJ, and Chris. I think it was just the four. There may have been more that I missed though. Uh, Joe, I believe, also went maybe. Who hasn't been on too much of the uh, modern Magic Mondays, but uh, he does come to the shop occasionally. 
Showed a wasteland of the land and then dropped a fetch. Huh. Just people play wasteland like it's a spell. <laughs> and that is uh, the Ajani from the Theros block. Mentor of Heroes. Mentor of Heroes. <clears throat> yeah, you were correct. I have uh, unfortunately kind of fallen into a trap where uh, I have not, um, I think, I'm not sure what happened there. I was uh, <laughs> looking away. Someone won though. Uh, I believe it was actually Ben because it looks like he might be the sideboarding here. Yep, even with that Johnny, I guess he just had enough damage to yeah. put through. Yeah, I mean, you know, Hairball points out uh, something in chat there. Gain 100 seems good against Burn, but, you know, a lot many Burn decks are playing uh, Skull Cracks, at least some number, so it would be a real feel-bad situation where they just slow roll the Skull Crack and you're, well, suddenly now uh, I don't gain any life at all and my ultimate does literally nothing. Nice. All right, there we go. Now everything's working. So Ben's gonna take that with Burn, two zero against Max. Um, so what do you what do you think about Max's deck? We saw a little bit more coming out of the second game there. The creatures, I think, were a little uh, underpowered, unfortunately. Okay. With two mana creatures, you know, you're looking for things like Tarmogoy, you're looking at things like Dark Confidant that draw you cards. Uh, while some of this may have been a uh, Budget choice. I know Max doesn't uh, throw nearly as much money as some of the other guys in the sure. shops do with their deck. Um, you know, Fleece Main, uh, while it might be a pet card for him or something, it's just a little, a little underwhelming, I think, for Modern. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just... Uh, it doesn't do as much as some of the other two-mana creatures, for sure. But yeah. then again, you know, you're talking about Dark Confidant, $80 plus, and Tarmogoyf even more. So, right, right. You know, if you're looking, if you're looking for an efficient two-mana creature, Fleece Main's not terrible. So are you saying, like, okay, so Dan and I have always joked that um, the reason why we can't play green decks, besides, you know, obviously Infect, is if we want to play an efficient modern green deck, you you have to have Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I think uh, to an extent, um, I mean, Tarmogoyf is really made for, for decks that want to splash. I mean, that's probably the biggest error Wizards made with the card. Um, you know, actually, there was an interesting story where it kept going in and out of the file, in and out of the file for creative and it was supposed to originally be green green, and it was actually supposed to be originally star star, but then it got removed, and they brought it back from memory, and it became one in a green and star star plus one. So it actually pushed the card over the top and it lets you splash it in decks that maybe wouldn't necessarily have uh, access to creatures as efficient as that. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So hmm. this is why we brought him on here. You hear these stories? Came out from the file. It was back and forth. Man. So, yeah, as always, guys, we've got one round in the books. We'll have three more coming your way. But sitting right next to me, if you haven't noticed yet, is not Nan, but Dionysus Bacchus. That's right. It's a bigger, bigger stream this week. It's uh, extra gluttony is yes. what we were trying to call extra it. Extra gluttony. Uh, we didn't bring any bread or anything I like left the that. beer at home because yeah. this stream would go downhill very quickly. <laughs> very, very quickly. But also to remind you guys, I threw it up a link in chat for you guys, but I'll do it again. This season, we have a bingo board. And if you guys take a look at it, it's randomized. You can hit new card, and it'll give you a new one. But you got a free space. You've got end of turn with 16 or less life. You know, things like that. I think also at some point we did see Ben change uh, Max's life total on the iPad. And uh, so always just keep track of that. And at the end of the season, we've got stickers. We've got all sorts of fantastic things like that to give away. So as always, be sure to hit the follow button here at The Real Nan Man and also at our new location, which I figured I would go ahead and wait for Nan. You know, I felt like that was only fair. Yeah, it's only right. Uh, but be sure to hit the follow buttons here and at Modern Magic Mondays which I have going up right now, so that you guys can always be alerted when we go live for this. It's always Mondays and always at around 6.30 p.m. that we'll be doing this. Uh, and we normally have about five uh, rounds of coverage. Yep, I um, think it's been five ever since uh, 
I started doing the table judge thing. So yeah. it's been, uh, yeah. what is five rounds? 17 or more players every time? Yes. So it's between yep. 17 and 33. So mm-hmm. just, I know you hope we never get to the sixth round. Yeah, yeah, so. Right, right. It's going to be like 1 or 2 a.m. And we're just like, guys, I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> I was told the street. I don't know who told you that. But we're going to wait until Nan gets back next week. Yeah, you can't kick it off with me. That's not fair. That's, yeah, I mean, it, you know. You know. But be sure to not only follow, you know, Modern Magic Mondays at Modern Magic Mondays on Twitter. Also follow at Dionysus Bach because he's a funny guy. Sometimes I do stuff on Twitter, but not yeah. as much as uh, Nan and uh, Brett. So. That's why we set it up. And boom, we've got bots and everything. But let's take a look at point totals. Let's see what we got going on going into round number three. And there we go. So, you know, the the pack is getting a little bit lighter. Tim, Josh Robinson, a new face. Keenan, my boy. Lyle, Jamie, all sitting at six points. And then we have a large handful sitting at three. You've got Dwayne Hess, who was a a familiar face from season two, uh, actually told me that he is going to be, with his work schedule, going to be able to participate a little bit more this season. So that's super exciting. And uh, I've already said that my pick this season, Julia. Julia. Julia is my pick this season. Do you have a pick, by the way? Uh, I have not officially announced one. I guess I would... I, I you don't, don't have to now. Well, I don't know if it's a Dark Horse pick or not, but, yeah. uh, you know, I I might look at uh, Jeremy Miller. Jeremy oh. Oh, eked into the top eight last time. Oh. He was playing a little bit... Uh, he didn't go with the traditional Tron... He was kind of trying to, uh, I guess, be a little more fair and uh, creative and talented. Mm. <laughs> so he uh, didn't didn't play Tron as much, but he did uh, did eke into the top eight last time. So maybe he'll uh, he'll make a strong run and finish a little bit higher this time, and not uh, you know have a little nail biter there at the end with everybody. Sure, sure. Mox is also another person who missed quite a few of week uh, or of season two, and I think that's kind of why he didn't make top eight. But he was also very close at the end, and Mox plays very. Uh, unique decks, so yes. that only he can play. So um, he could also do another uh, another run as well. I think. For anyone who doesn't know, Mox is actually John Matthias, who's sitting there in the list, uh, just to give everyone the the information there. And he's also he's playing the we talked about it, the Amulet Titan yes. deck. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I just I've known him Mox and for yeah, years. Yeah, no, so, you're fine. So. You're absolutely fine. Um, and he and I will say the last season he was consistently making 12 points. Yeah, uh, a couple times I think, or at least once 15 points. Yeah, and he was playing the version of Amulet that I think uh, Jeremy is on now a little bit. I know they, their lists have diverged a little bit, but uh, I think that he was playing what Jeremy ended up. Um, you know, doing doing pretty well with it the uh, the invitational and then uh, playing uh, for the better part of uh, or the first couple weeks of the season, I think. So. Okay. All right. And uh, it looks like someone's asking in chat, where can we find the week one standings? Uh, I will go ahead and see if I can get that up for you guys. I do not have an official image created for that, uh, but we can probably splice something together so you guys can see what the week standings looked like. Um, just as we move into week number two, which we do have an image for. Uh, but, however, let's go ahead and hop into round number three and see what we got going on. 